this is Peter Sharoshi, the editor of the Drug Reporter website, and you are watching Drug Reporter Cafe, our online video series discussing drug policy developments in the world. Today, our guest is Jindrik Voboril, the National Drug Coordinator of the Czech Republic. We are going to discuss the recent news about a major cannabis reform happening uh, in, his, in his country. Hello, Jindrik. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Hello, thank you for inviting me and I hope it's going to be useful what I'm going to uh, share. I'm sure it will be super useful for everybody in Europe because uh, yeah. it's quite exciting news we got from the Czech Republic. So uh, your government made a decision to make cannabis legal. Can you explain us uh, why uh, you decided so? So what, what are the major arguments uh, behind making this reform? The government uh, uh, gave me the mandate to prepare the the, the proposal. Uh, it's not yet uh, agreed, but uh, yes, we have an a, a, uh, an agreement across the coalition party to do it. the The main argument <clears throat> is that the prohibition doesn't work. The main reason for prohibition is preventing harms in terms of health and security. Uh, especially in the area of cannabis, but not only. We have an established market. The market is growing. It's only illegal. We said that, that this makes no sense, not, neither from preventative side, neither from the side of the taxation, neither from the security part, because the, particularly cannabis is one of the drugs that doesn't pose uh, such a big risk to the society. So can you explain us uh, the current uh, situation, current laws? How do they regulate cannabis now? It's often written that uh, the drug use is decriminalized in Czech Republic. How does that look like in reality? Hmm. Maybe I should also add to the, your previous question that <clears throat> what I'm promising, uh, on one side, we will collect more taxation. On the other side, the preventative instruments actually we believe are going to be bigger and stronger. I mean, now in prohibition, you have only the possibility of police uh, securing the facts and then pr prosecuting. But uh, in the legal regulated, strictly regulated market, you have many other options. Uh, for example, how we're going to uh, make sure that uh, the products are not going to get in the hands of minors. We have other institutions and possibilities than only police. But anyway, the current law we had since 1997, I think, decriminalization of possession for personal use. And then it stopped. We came back for criminalizing it. Criminalizing it. And then uh, some uh, government uh, study showed that it was a wrong move and 2010 we came back to the previous law <laughs> in terms of cannabis itself we have 10 grams of possession for personal use without prosecuting with criminal sanctions but you still can get a fine that we have administrative law uh, separate from the criminal law not all countries have this using is totally legal, uh, but possession for personal use is not legal, but in small quantities, you get a fine, which is, for example, with heroin, uh, 1.5 gram, with methamphetamine, 1.5 grams, with cannabis, 10 grams, or up to five plants in your garden. That proved to be okay, uh, no major problem uh, was happening actually the study as i said showed that when we came back to to the harsher way of um, uh, punishing position for personal use it showed that it, it, it didn't make sense the government study was called part and that showed that uh, the the number of people that were prosecuted for minor offenses uh, grew from one year to another very high Etc. It didn't make any sense. Though uh, not not all people agree on it, and uh, sometimes the police would uh, would kind of bend this this law, and sometimes even people with small quantity end up in front of the court. But uh, usually it's not the case. So a lot of people possess some small amount, and you, and we have about three thousand people every year that get some fines. In terms of problem drug use, 
we are um, under or above the average of European Union, which is better than the rest of the world. Uh, so there is no disaster in problematic drug use in terms of cannabis use. It, it uh, went skyrocketing at some point. Uh, we were above all the all the charts uh, of, of the rest of the countries in, in the EU, but it didn't correlate with problem drug use, especially injecting drug use of uh, methamphetamine in this country. Heroin is very low problem here. We are rather more concerned with uh, problem uh, alcohol use among underage. Uh, that's our big, much bigger problem. And uh, since uh, uh, as a national coordinator, I am in charge of tobacco, gambling, uh, illegal drugs and uh, and uh, and alcohol. And this is much much bigger concern, and this is how we see it here. Current government, I think that you didn't ask for that, but I think it's it's usual uh, useful to to say that said that all addictive substances and gambling will be regulated according to their risks. So in tobacco, for example, if I of course you can imagine. Cannabis is one of it, but in tobacco, for example, we say we will support alternatives to cigarettes because, because they are less, less risky. So, in fact, our policy and the coalition program and the government program says that our policy is going to be geared to minimizing harms and risks, not abstinence society, but harm reduction policy in all areas including alcohol including uh, including uh, gambling and of course in the illegal drugs that's why we say okay let's look at cannabis but not only czech republic also made it uh, legal to use cannabis for medical purposes what are your experiences with this uh, with this regulation are there any lessons learned for uh, regulating the recreational market yeah we made it too strict so only a few a few hundred patients actually have an access uh, regular we also gave it in the hands of the medicine regulators which is complicated so we need to do it differently but we are talking about regulating markets so there's going to be usual market scenario but at the same time there's going to be strong restrictions stronger than tobacco but this is my proposal at this moment for certain period of time the limitations will be not number of licenses of producers we will not limit the number of licenses but they will have to go through very strict process to secure that their products are going to be safer they will need to show how what is going to be the, the handling so it doesn't leak to the black market the distribution channel or let's say the, is also going to be limited with licenses we're also talking about registration of users. This moment, I know it's very strict, but uh, we still are trying to resolve the problem with uh, um, uh, international conventions. Uh, and we, we believe that this is actually going to be an argument to say, yes, this is in line with conventions because uh, uh, because uh, people who need it will just ask for it and by registering. And then there's going to be a usual things, taxation, but uh, it's going to be stricter than tobacco. And we will give it, this is my proposal, we will give it some, uh, some period, like let's say three years, with the strict rules like People who want to use it have to register and then we might stop the registration, but uh, for the beginning. The illegal production will be still criminalized. In terms of production for, for personal growing, we will allow pers uh, up to five, four or five plants. We'll see, we'll have the debate about it. Uh, yeah. We also want to allow uh, uh, cannabis social clubs. I am particular uh, fond, fond of, of this, uh, this solution. When I heard it first time, I, I didn't think much of it. But then I went to see it in, um, in Barcelona, and I think it's quite clever if we do it well. I saw it also in, um, in Uruguay. It's a little bit different in Uruguay. 
but uh, I think we need to uh, we need to allow this. It's a good alternative, like kind of non-profit alternative to the usual business. But um, I'm guessing that, like in Israel, for example, or in Uruguay, uh, it will become a usual um, usual business. So if, if you look around in the world, there, there are now different international models of how to regulate cannabis. You mentioned Uruguay. So is the Uruguay a model that will be closest to the Czech model or is it the Canadian or how do you see which one is the best? It's mix between Canadian and, and Uruguayan. And of course, there's going to be some uh, Czech, Czech uh, points. But uh, one... Uh, uh, important thing I must mention that Germany, Holland, Malta and Luxembourg said and Czech Republic, we said that we need to coordinate uh, because we are in Schengen. So, um, and I know that some partners in the EU are not happy with, with our decision. So we need to coordinate um, certain steps. Uh, we already have some analysis of uh, 200 pages which we are translating in, in English and we will make it available which has very concrete proposals and uh, there is an impact assessment so we see what can happen to the problem drug use, cannabis use, uh, taxation etc uh, etc. Et the video you are watching now is produced by the Rights Reporter Foundation, a non-profit organization which is not supported by any governments or political parties. If you like this show, please support our work on our website, drugreporter.net. Make a donation today and become our supporting member. It makes a difference. Thank you. There are also you know, concerns that uh, these new regulations will be only dictated by the industry, by the companies, uh, how, how do you make sure that also civil society and communities and professionals will be involved and included in this process of creating the, uh, the regulation model? Actually, before we, uh, we make the final proposal, I am planning to do certain uh, rounds of debates. So first of all, we are, I'm, I'm putting together an expert committee, which will allow as much everybody in as possible, meaning I, I, I'm asking the cannabis industry, which is hemp industry and the, the industry of medical cannabis to get together and, and send some uh, representative from their part. I'm of course asking the civil society to send, send representatives from their part. I need, of course, civil ser servants and politicians. So I want all sides, industry, NGOs. I want the treatment and prevention, prevention part, kind of the people who work with people with problem drug use in, in the debate. So it's going to be the expert committee. Then I would like to invite external experts to comment on our proposals. Uh, we want to invite people from... US from um, Canada, Uruguay, Thailand. Then we want to hold public hearing. People will be able, on behalf of, of different institutions, send in comments. And also we want to do roundtables with, with public. And only after all this, we want to, to send it to, to the parliament. We I'm expecting this uh, process until March. So with the first proposal I want to have ready and introduced to the media uh, by the end of this year, so quickly in a few months. And then I want to do the rounds of the public hearing, which will, uh, which will allow business uh, industries, as well as people who are concerned with treatment of addictions, as well as civil servants, police, judges, politicians, public. I believe this is going to uh, work well. Uh, I, I'm not afraid of this uh, public debate. I, I believe uh, our society is mature enough. You already mentioned the issue of the international conventions and uh, there are different kinds of uh, proposals how to 
circumnavigate these international conventions. And for example, Bolivia just withdrew from the convention and then uh, re-entered it with the reservation that they don't accept the coca-related parts. Do you think that could work in case of cannabis for, for like European Union member states? It could, but um, I'm much more concerned than uh, cannabis with other drugs as well. Uh, I think we need to see cannabis as some um, trial or um, uh, a not I don't want to call it an experiment because I think prohibition is an experiment and it's it's really not working experiment and it's bringing um, a lot of atrocities disturb destabilizing of regions countries <laughs> you know, creating enormous organized crime so so prohibition is an experiment this is not an experiment but we want to set up some some kind of a model that can work with other uh, substances as well i'm not saying that all substances should be the same but uh, definitely each family of drugs has certain sub, certain version of of the substance that is less risky and can be regulated and i think we should learn from it and uh, uh, as well as we are learning from legal drugs like tobacco and, and uh, alcohol or certain medicines, we should learn. Uh, we should also do the same with cannabis and then see how this works and uh, start challenging the whole prohibition. So, uh, and I think that the conventions either have to have amendments sooner or later, or we have to start ignoring it. As far as I know, the Pirate Party in your country proposed to regulate psychedelics as well. What do you think about that proposal? Yeah, this is one of the areas we have just been going through a public debate around some court case where two Polish young people, husband and wife, were providing ayahuasca rituals and uh, and they ended up in prison done for uh, eight and a half years the man and, and the young lady five and a half years on the 17th of october there is a the the, the appeal court and uh, and uh, the, the the prosecutor is proposing higher punishment for for the young woman eight years imprisonment so we saying this is this is this is allowed in in our law but i we see this as a wrong outdated law which has to be reflected and uh, and we should change that but so so that's why we have a big debate at this moment and um, but it's not only ayahuasca of course it's psilocybin and it's other psychedelic uh, substances we need to have an option to use it in a medical setup which still we don't have so we have to do this uh, that, like, as a first step. And another area is this kind of use under some control of ritual way. I'm, I'm not myself attracted to this. Uh, I've never been to this ritual. I'm not attracted to this type of um, um, working with mind. But I, I think this, is, this should not be in 21st century punished by imprisonment. So we need to we need to change that definitely, but I'm also concerned with other stimulant drugs. I'm also concerned with like cocaine or, or amphetamines. I'm also concerned with opioid drugs. I think the whole prohibition is causing more and more problems. And there are options how to stop it and how to use it differently. So we we really need to rethink the whole concept of drug control uh, i'm not against drug control I'm, I'm working in addiction field and i had a lot of patients or clients of mine who died as well as yes, because of uh, drug use but uh, but I, I think prohibition doesn't make sense as, as such a strict control uh, market strict control accessibility maybe not fully free market but accessibility is a better choice the Czech Republic is currently the president, has the presidency of the European Union. So that gives you some position to promote uh, your views 
in the European level. But at the same time, we see that some countries are really against such uh, reforms, such as I'm speaking from Hungary, and we know that Hungary is opposing very actively all kind of reform. So how do you see the chances that you can do something in the European level? Is it possible to uh, ally with other like-minded countries and uh, do something uh, jointly? Yeah, well, our priorities in for the European presidency the priorities were um, put in and the drug policies in line with human rights. Uh, and we talk in, in a very strong debate with all 27 countries. We're not talking about um, uh, regulated market uh, with cannabis, uh, but we talk uh, in, in this presidency, we're talking about accessibility of people who are diagnosed with uh, mental health diagnosis such as addiction accessibility to to substances uh, and stopping punishing people um, uh, when they're ill we aiming at council conclusion the council conclusion in a way is big because it's the heads of the governments of 27 countries but at the same time it's only it's not an obligatory document. It's an instructive, but not obligatory. I believe we can agree with 27 countries that human rights should be in the center of the drug policies, that they should not be put aside, that uh, some of the countries argue that uh, security is more important, but we argue that prohibition causes the bigger security problem. And uh, when you have people who are ill, they, they have the right to have an access to, to them, to their uh, substances, that they should have a right because it's they're ill. Uh, uh, so punishing anybody for, uh, uh, for use is against humane policies, let's say. At the same time, we want to say by this document that the European Union should be active on the UN level, not only changing the policies internally. So I, I get questions from my colleagues from other countries. If I seriously think that we are breaking human rights in the EU, and I keep telling, giving them some case studies, yes, we are breaking human rights often here and there. And it can be the policy itself, or it can be a just behavior or, or interpretation of the policy and the laws. But at the same time, we know well that outside of the EU, it's it's uh, it's much more serious. That there are countries who who deny any substitution programs to to people. We there are countries that execute even mental mentally ill people uh, for use. Uh, there are countries that execute people without trial, thousands of people without trial with, with the alibi that it's because of drugs. So all this should be addressed and an EU should be a ambassador of humane drugs policy, at least in these basic areas. And of course, uh, another area, what should be the center of the policy, drugs policy? Should it, should it be security or should it be public health? Is the security compromised by the harsh policies or uh, the security, the, the harsh policies actually create uh, bigger problems? Uh, and if we concentrate rather on prevention and help, would it actually work better and we have all the data already in the european union which i believe all 27 countries are more or less oriented rather on on public health and health policy than the security but and, and we have the data comparing to the rest of the world that it worked the european union is actually much more comfortable with all this we don't uh, have narco states among 27 countries, but outside of the European Union, in Europe, it's questionable. Thank you very much, Jindri, for being with us and uh, sharing with us your insight about uh, cannabis reform in the Czech Republic. Okay, thank you for inviting me. I hope I, that what, what I was saying was in any way interesting and maybe useful.
Thank you so much for, for being with us. Um, and uh, thank you for those who are watching us online. Uh, remember that Drug Reporter is a non-profit organization, so please uh, donate us on drugreporter.net. Thank you. Thank you.